Reagan had a plan to deal with Maskarkova. Unfortunately, a censor with a Sharpie masked it from eyes of history, blocked it out there. But what should Barack Obama do about this round of Russian deception and denial? Joining me now, Weekly Standard editor Bill Kristol and New York Times columnist Nick Kristof. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Uh, Bill, I'll get to you in a second, but Nick, you're just... From the fatherland. Your, your father was from Ukraine. Yeah, my dad grew up uh, there, and so I was back in Ukraine and also went back to my dad's native village. And what's the feel? Well, I mean, what are they saying about Putin, about America, and everything? You know, one 16-year-old girl in, in my ancestral village, uh, I asked her if she could speak Russian. She's speaking good English that she learned in the local school, and she said, I can speak Russian, but as a patriot, I won't. And that was kind of the mood there, that, uh, you know, people, they, especially kids, they want to be a part of the West. They want, they see Poland getting richer and stronger. They want to be like Poland. They want to listen to modern music. They want to be wealthier. They want to have better lives. And to them, Russia represents the Soviet Union and a failed experiment. And do, what do they want from the United States and the West? They're a little bit disappointed, frankly, in the U.S. They feel that they have this unrequited love affair with, with the U.S. They admire the U.S. so much. They want to be a part of it. And they feel the U.S. is kind of standoffish, that we're not providing as much aid as we might, that we're not providing as much moral support as we might. And they understand that we're not going to send troops. I mean, there isn't any expectation of that. But they would like to see a little bit more of a hug from afar. Do they read Bill Crystal? In that um, part of uh, Ukraine, because when you say troops, they... we think Bill Crystal. Uh, you, you went on, on New Day last week, Bill, and said a couple brigades would send a message. Do you, do you stand by that? you think we should have American boots on the ground in Ukraine? I'm not sure we should. I am sure that the President of the United States should not have ruled it out. And indeed, what happens if Putin actually invades Ukraine? Are we really going to stick to the position that it's inconceivable that we send troops? We stuck to that position in Syria. Assad seems to have used chemical weapons. Once again, let's not talk about ground troops. How about maybe a little air power or air support or providing weapons to the Ukrainians? Would that be such a bridge too far for President Obama to go? So I think, it's, I think the people Nick saw in Ukraine are right to be disappointed in us, and I say that with great regret. As an, I don't think we have an American president who is standing up to Putin in the way that Reagan did in that, after reading that 1983 memo and before reading it, too, to the Soviet Union. But it doesn't seem, you know, if, if history is any guide... You really think he's motivated by what Obama thinks about foreign policy? It, I think he could be deterred by what Obama does in foreign policy, yes. I think Putin is a little bit worried about the U.S. standing up to him. He's an opportunist. He's moved to take parts of the Ukraine. He'll move to take more parts if he doesn't see strength. And we need to, it doesn't, it's not us alone. It's us leading NATO. But he's got to see strength from us. I, I, I uh, you know, Bill and I have very similar last names. We have a very different uh, approach on this. I, you know, President Reagan, it was under President Reagan, after all, uh, that uh, the Soviet Union and Poland cracked down on solidarity in 1981. Uh, it was under President George W. Bush, who was as uh, tough a, an interventionist a figure as one can imagine, that the Soviets grabbed two parts of Georgia um, in 2008. Um, you know, there, this is not about President Obama. This is about Putin. Right. And I think it's... Uh, there, I think there indeed have been places where the Obama administration uh, has messed up, and I think Syria is one of them. I don't think that has anything to do with President Putin's actions today in Ukraine or Moldova. But you say you met some Taylor Swift fans over there who love the West, and when it comes down to it, you're going to bet on Taylor Swift winning hearts and minds more than Putin. Maybe push these people through this kind of aggression into the arms of the West. I think in the long run, you know, in 1968, when the Soviet Union invaded Czechoslovakia, that drove the Czechs ultimately to the West. Right. And the same thing is happening right now. So maybe Putin will be able to hold on to Crimea. Maybe he'll be able to grab uh, a chunk of, of southern Ukraine or of eastern Ukraine. But in the long run, he is expelling from the Russian Empire, and it is going to become a part of the West. These people, increasingly, they, even the Russian speakers, are offended by the propaganda that they see on Russian television, yeah. and that is driving them to the West. I'm hearing how alarming that is. Uh, Bill, you know, speaking of Obama's fortitude, the, the steel in his spine, you must have seen this uh, news out of Yemen over the weekend. We're going to shift gears into the, into the war on terror. 65 militants from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula killed in a drone attack. Um, 
your report card on that side of his foreign policy must be pretty glowing. No, I think he has a decent counterterrorism policy. He just doesn't have a serious foreign policy in dealing with dictators like Assad or Putin. I think it's ridiculous to say that Putin wasn't influenced by what he saw happening last summer when President Obama backed off on the red line with Assad. Look, I'm not for using force everywhere. I'm just making a And I think for Nick to say calmly that, you know, wait a few decades, things will work out fine. Really? Is that how the real world works? Dictator, you know, you just sit back and let the dictators digest their gains. And then one day we hope that the people rise up and overthrow them. Reagan did an awful lot of things to help liberate uh, Eastern Europe. I agree, he didn't react with force every time or most of the time, but he did have a huge defense build up. He did stick with NATO and, defend, and deploy medium range missiles to, the, to, to, to Western Europe. He didn't give in at Reykjavik, et cetera. And he, but he so, wasn't coming off of a 10 year war in Iraq either. He was coming off tough wars in Korea and Vietnam, you know, and he was in Vietnam was how many years before Reagan became president? Seven years. And how many people did we lose in Vietnam? Over 50,000. And that didn't deter Reagan from pursuing a tough foreign policy. And he was right to do so. And it didn't require using much force because people thought he was strong. It's weakness that invites war. And a weakness that makes me worry that we will end up having to use force when we wouldn't have had to if we had seen stronger, I think. But you disagree with the idea that there's a war fatigue in this country because historically we, we get to go back. But the appetite for this is the, uh, the latest survey I saw was that 58 percent of Americans did not want us to do anything about Ukraine, even economic sanctions. Fifty eight percent. Fifty eight percent of Britons, I'm sure, didn't want anything to be done about Czechoslovakia in 1938. But, that but, doesn't prove anything. But, Bill, you know, you talk about waiting for the in the long run. And I mean, I agree that that's an unappetizing solution. I wish that they were a more immediate solution. But I think back to when. Uh, to when Russia grabbed Transnistria from Moldova in 1991. And the first President Bush uh, accepted that because there weren't any good alternatives. It was unsatisfying to wait and let Russia do this. But looking back, I think it, we can agree that it would have been a worse mistake to try to send uh, U.S. forces there uh, over this little territory. We accepted something really unfortunate that Russia stole it. In 2008, we accepted Russia stealing parts of Georgia. This year, we've accepted Russia stealing parts of Crimea. And it's, it's frustrating, uh, but sometimes there isn't a better alternative, I don't believe. I'll give you a 10 second re rejoinder, Bill. I think Nick would agree, though, that we would defend our NATO allies in the Balts and, and in Poland, or, or do we just accept some troublemaking and seizing of uh, the country there? Good, good. Those guys can have all the missiles and Taylor Swift CDs they want. <laughs> uh, Bill Crystal, Nick Kristoff, thanks for being here. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks. When we come back, more than six weeks of intensive searching, still no plane. The experts now recalibrate 